Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation, Life Insurance Overview Part 1. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Insurance is part of our long-term risk mitigation strategy where we follow the adage of measure twice, cut once, put in a formal process in place looking something like set the insurance goals, develop a plan to reach them, put the plan in action, review the results, repeat the process periodically. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia, a life insurance guide to policies and companies, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Amy Fontanier, updated May 25th, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at insurance in general. Now we're looking at life insurance in conjunction or in alignment with that discussion. Life insurance can kind of be thought of as more, more classical kind of insurance in some ways. In other words, if you think about like property insurance or liability insurance, you're typically safeguarding against something you hope doesn't happen, the likelihood of it happening possibly being low, but if did happen, would be financially catastrophic. Therefore, you are insuring against it, such as your home burning down or such as someone suing you for millions of dollars. Life insurance is kind of similar to that in that you're insuring against dying. We're all going to die at some point, but dying possibly prematurely. And therefore, uh, the people that depend on the income that you are earning would have an issue there. And so that's what you're kind of could be thinking about in most cases insuring against. So in that sense, uh, life insurance can be a, a little bit more straightforward, although there's a lot of complexities with all kinds of insurance, when, especially when you get into the calculations and so on. But that's a little bit different than the medical insurance, which we talked about in the past, which has been expanded to kind of encompass some other stuff. You're still insuring against that big financially catastrophic event, but it also kind of, you can think of it trying to cover all these other kind of things that are involved, including like the maintenance and the routine visits and that kind of stuff. So what is life insurance? Life insurance is a contract between an insurer and a policy holder. So the insurer, typically an insurance company and the policy holder, the person purchasing the insurance paying the premium. A life insurance policy guarantees the insurer pays a sum of money. So that's typically the insurance company paying a sum of money to a, to named beneficiaries. So these are people that are named as the recipients. So if you think about like a classical case, like a husband say purchasing insurance for the family, the husband saying, hey, I've got, I've got uh, money that is being dependent upon my future income and salary is what the family is dependent upon. If I died prematurely, then they would have a problem. Possibly I safeguard against that uh, from happening uh, by buying the insurance so that the beneficiaries, family members, possibly wife, then would be receiving money. That would be kind of the idea in a classical kind of case. So when the insurer dies, so when we think the insurer is gonna die within the policy term, right? So they might have died prematurely, and that's when the insurance might kick in in exchange for the premiums paid by the policy holder. So the policy holder is the person that's gonna be you know, purchasing the policies and of course paying the premiums in order to mitigate the risk uh, in the event that they die prematurely so that the people dependent upon them may still have some income to rely on. So during their lifetime. So the life insurance application must accurately disclose the, insur the insured's past and current health conditions and high risk activities to enforce the contract. And this makes sense if we just think about kind of how the insurance company works real quickly. We can think that if if I was trying to think about my likelihood of dying prematurely, the likelihood might be low. I'm trying to safeguard against that outside event that it could happen. If I was to pool myself in and look at the big statistics numbers from the insurance company side of things, although they can't predict who might die prematurely with a large set of numbers, they can predict that someone might die prematurely and they can then calculate what their payouts are gonna be and so on on an aggregate basis. And that's how they can kind of try to figure out what the premiums should be and how it should cost and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, if you have life conditions that are making it more likely that you're gonna die, if you like to just, if you tend to sleep every night on railroad tracks or something like that, the insurance company might wanna take that into consideration and adjust the risk factors 
uh, based on that information. So types of life insurance, many different types of life insurance are available to meet all sorts of needs and preferences, depending on the short or long term needs of the person to be insured. The major choice of whether to select temporary or permanent life insurance is important to consider. So you might consider, do you want to have life insurance that you're going to be purchasing for a certain point of time or some kind of permanent life insurance? Term life insurance. Term life insurance lasts a certain number of years, then ends. You choose the term when you take out the policy. Common terms are 10, 20, or 30 years. The best term life insurance policies uh, balance affordability with long-term financial strength. So term life insurance uh, has a set term which makes it a little bit easier to kind of think about in some ways and that can be kind of nice because obviously most of the time when you're thinking about life insurance you're probably thinking that you're going to be needing coverage during that time in your life when you're making income where other people possibly are dependent upon that income which lasts a certain term of time uh, you would expect and you can think about you know what you're actually purchasing can be a little bit more straightforward of a calculation uh, with term life insurance oftentimes. What types of term do we have? We've got the decreasing term life insurance is renewable term life insurance with coverage decreasing over the life of the policy at a predetermined rate. So notice we kind of still have an idea of what is going on here, what we're purchasing because it's a renewable item and the coverage uh, decreases over the life of the policy, but it does so at a predetermined rate. We've got the convertible term life insurance allows policyholders to convert a term policy to permanent insurance, that being the conversion component. Then we got the renewable term life insurance provides a quote for the year the policy is purchased. Premiums increase annually and are usually the the least expensive term insurance in the beginning. Permanent life insurance, on the other hand, we've got the permanent life insurance as opposed to the term life insurance, stays in force for the insured's entire life unless the policyholder stops paying the premiums or surrenders the policy. It's typically more expensive than term. So the permanent is going to be more confusing. You can think, of course, from the calculation side of things, if you look at the actuarial calculations, because if you're not setting a set term of how long the policy is going to be covered for, then you would think you would have more complex actuarial calculations because they would have to determine what the likelihood of you dying or when you're going to die kind of calculation uh, would be. Which again, if you could look at the aggregate stacks with big numbers, you can start to get a feel uh, for what that would be so they can start to figure out their calculations and their premiums and so on. So whole life insurance is a type of permanent life insurance that accumulates cash value. Cash value life insurance allows the policyholder to use the cash value for many purposes such as a source of loans or cash or to pay policy premiums. So notice the whole life gets a little bit more confusing because because of this component which you could argue might be kind of like an investment as well as kind of like life insurance, right? So now we're whereas the term life insurance is pretty clearly you're buying life insurance that's what it is and you're buying it for a, a term of time frame so that's where it gets a little bit more complex when you go into the whole life insurance which once again is a type of permanent life insurance that accumulates cash value cash value life insurance allows the policyholder to use the cash value for many purposes such as a source of loans or cash or cash or to pay policy premiums so then we have universal life that's the ul we've got universal life ul is a type of permanent life insurance with a cash value component that earns interest so once again you got this earning interest which you might think of something as more like of an investment investments are things that that earn uh interest so it's a little bit different than maybe the term life which is something where it's pretty clear that you're buying simply the life insurance where with some of the permanent life insurance you might say well there's kind of an investment Kind of component to this universal life features flexible premiums unlike term and whole life the premiums can be adjusted over time and designed with a level of death benefit or an increasing death benefit so i'll just tell you from my experience with people that i've dealt with on the life insurance most of the people have recommended to me that i'd like to be purchasing something that i kind of know what i'm purchasing so if i'm purchasing life insurance everything else equal I would basically like to be purchasing just the life insurance and if i'm investing then everything else equal 
I would like to be basically putting my money into investments, stocks and bonds, savings accounts that are going to be doing something like the earning interest. Now, obviously, things can get more complex because you might say, well, what if there's tax implications and things and so on, and there's, there's tax benefits, and if there's a significant amount of tax savings, then obviously you might structure things that are going to be a little bit more complex. But everything else equal i tend to to think even if i'm going to get a benefit from it i'd rather invest in something that's i understand or the simple thing that i understand and i know why i'm doing it uh, rather than a quite complex thing unless there's a significant benefit so there's you know pros and cons of the different different formats you can be picking so indexed universal that's the uh, iul is a type of universal life insurance that lets the policy earner earn a fixed or equity index rate of return on the cash value component. Then we've got the variable universal. Life insurance allows the policyholder to invest the policy's cash value in an available separate account. It also has flexible premiums and can be designed with a level death benefit or an increasing death benefit. So top rated companies to purchase. So you can take, take a look at these. This is obviously from Investopedia. But if you're trying to actually do some comparisons of companies, you can take a look at some of these and do your own research from there. Nationwide, Protective, Mass Mutual, Mutual of Omaha, and so on. We might go into a, a bit more on those lists uh, later. Term versus permanent life insurance. Term life insurance differs from permanent life insurance in several ways, but tends to uh, best meet the needs of most people. So if you talk to a lot of people, I guess more I guess more people that might be considered more conservative type of people might say that the term life insurance might be the way to go for the reasons or for partially the reasons we've discussed in that if you're purchasing life insurance it's pretty straight cut that term life insurance is life insurance if you're investing in something that's has an investment component then you might buy, want to be investing in stocks and bonds so that you know that you're investing in something with an investment component unless again you're doing some kind of strategy that uh, is giving you some other benefits such as possibly tax benefits so term life insurance only lasts for a set period of time and pays a death benefit uh, should the policyholder die before the term has expired so obviously you have a term which given a lifetime you could be fairly you, you, know, you can set a fairly accurate term to say oh wait this is the part of the life where people might be dependent upon my income so i'm going to set the term life insurance here and then and then have that coverage in the event that a problem happens that meaning you die prematurely it's quite a problem it's a big problem for you it's a problem for other people too if they if they're dependent on your income so permanent life insurance stays in effect as long as the policyholder pays the premium another critical difference involves premiums term life is generally much less expensive than permanent life because it does not involve building a cash value so once again, you're not doing this whole cash value thing. You're just buying life insurance, right? I'm buying life insurance. Why are you buying life insurance? Because I want to have insurance against me dying. That's what I'm doing, right? It does, so, so that's straightforward on, on what you're purchasing, which is nice. Before you apply for life insurance, you should analyze your financial situation and determine how much money you would be required to maintain your beneficiary standard of living or meet the need for which you're purchasing a policy. So clearly if you're purchasing a policy so that if you were happening to die prematurely and your dependents are now then dependent upon the insurance, how much is the insurance paying out and, and would that be sufficient in that event? So for example, if you are the primary caretaker and have two children and four years, uh, two children and four years old, you would want enough insurance to cover your custodial responsibilities until your children are growing up and able to support themselves. You might research the cost of hiring uh, a nanny and a housekeeper or using commercial child care and cleaning services, then perhaps add some money for education. Include any outstanding mortgage and retirement needs for your spouse and your life insurance calculation, especially if the spouse earns significantly less or is a stay-at-home parent. Add up what these costs would be would be over the next 16 or so years, add more for inflation, and that's the death benefit you might want to buy uh, if you can afford it so obviously that can get quite complex but you can try to budget out all right how long is this you know are the, these needs going to be held 
given the fact that the children's age or the children's age and so on and try to factor out how much insurance would then be appropriate which once again if you're buying term life insurance then you can try to get the policy that covers you know that calculation and usually it's a little bit more straightforward how much life insurance to buy many factors can affect the cost of life insurance premiums certain things may be beyond your control but other criteria can be managed to potentially bring down the cost before applying after being approved for a life insurance policy if your health has improved and you've made positive lifestyle changes you can request to be considered for change in risk class let me guess it's smoking if I smoke, I have to have, they're gonna tell me I, my life insurance is gonna be ridiculously expensive. So even if it is found that you're in poorer health, then at the initial underwriting, your premiums will, go, will not go up. So if you're found, so if you're found to be in better health, then you can expect your premiums to decrease, which could be nice. Step one, determine how much you need. Think about what expenses would need to be covered in the event of your death. Things like mortgage, college tuition, and other debts, not to mention funeral expenses. Just put me in the ground in a cardboard box for crying out loud. Okay, plus, Income replacement is a major factor if your spouse or loved ones need cash flow and are not able to provide it on their own. There are helpful tools online to calculate the lump sum that can satisfy any potential expenses that would need to be covered. So you might want to take a look online, think about calculation tools in the event of a death. What affects your life insurance premiums and costs? Step two, prepare your application. Age. This is the most important factor because life expectancy is the biggest determination of risk for the insurance company. So obviously on the insurance company side of things, if they're trying to calculate what's the likelihood of you dying, if you're you know, 22, probably less likely that you're gonna die than if you're 70 or something, right? Obviously, of course, a lot of 22 year olds are kind of reckless, maybe like 30 something would be a safer area. But in any case, you, you see what I'm saying, gender, because women uh, statistically live longer, they generally play lower rates than males of the same age. Bias, my goodness. But in any case, <laughs> that makes sense, of course, because actuarial calculations, if women uh, tend to live longer, then that's good for life insurance calculations. So that's good. Smoking, I knew it, I knew it so on the top three. One person who smokes is at risk for many health issues that could shorten life and increase risk-based premiums. So if you smoke, then they're gonna, they're gonna increase your, <laughs> your premiums. They're already charging me more for my taxes on my cigarettes and now they're in my life insurance, my medic, they're just taxing me. It's all, they're all, all taking money from the smokers. Health. Medical exams for most policies include screening for health conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer related medical ma matrix uh, that can indicate risk. Lifestyle, dangerous lifestyles can make premiums much more expensive. So if you just like to sleep on railroad tracks or something like that, then you know that could increase the risk. So family medical history, if you have evidence of major disease in your immediate family, your risk of developing certain conditions is much higher. So if you have family risk, then they're just gonna, that doesn't seem fair, does it? I mean, it's just because my dad had heart disease and my dad's dad had heart disease and my mom's dad had, then you, yeah, that's how it works because you're more likely to have heart disease whatever driving record a history of moving violations or drunk driving can dramatically increase the cost of insurance premiums so what i hit a few cars whatnot no one was hurt we're f yeah they're gonna they might increase the premium for that possibly life insurance buying guide life insurance applications generally require personal and family medical history and beneficiaries information so you will also uh, likely need to submit to a medical exam so they're gonna well, they're gonna check you out on this one. Just that, it's, that you might be able to the, all the, some of the other ones is pre-existing condition stuff, whatever. Life insurance, they're not messing around. They want to know what what your what your health is like possibly here. So you will need to disclose any pre-existing medical conditions, history of moving violations, DUIs, and any dangerous hobbies such as auto racing or skydiving. So if you're skydiving, 
you know, I don't even wear a parachute when I do it. So, that, so that's going to increase. Standard forms of identification will also be needed before a policy can be written, such as your social security card, driver's license, and U.S. passport. So they even, they even want to know it's you that you're talking about, these people. So picky. We'll continue on with this in the following presentation.